And then finally we got, we got, we got the idea. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you my epiphany. This epiphany was, and, and I was like writing things. I, I wrote something, I wrote a poem, and so I was, and then Paul was finally was doing more than he usually does. And he was actually setting up scenes. So we had Lane Coleman and Andy Tan be a couple of guys, you know, peak caps before, uh, you know, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of, oh, what are they called? Doug and Doug and Bob and Doug McKenzie. McKenzie. Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yeah. Yeah. We were initiating playing with these characters. Mm -hmm. And theater had so much to do with creating those characters in terms of national identity and nation building and all that. We had no characters on the stage that reflected us. Yeah. So this was. So they were peak cap guys, and he said, okay, you go to the drive-in, and he pointed to me and said, you be the movie. And I swear to God, it was like this, and I swear I felt like this red flash of light come across my eyes, and I leapt up, and I did all of Jaws, <laughs> the entire movie. I did the shark, and I did them showing their scars, and I was just wild. I was just wild. I did the end scene when they're swimming at the end, mm -hmm. like Robert Shaw going, and this was what happened when I was in the, you know, there were 50 of us when we went in and two mm -hmm. came out, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember how long I went on. Mm -hmm. Finally, I finished, and I looked up, and the car was gone, like the guys were sort of supposed to be sitting there, and apparently mm -hmm. they had tried to stop me, but they'd driven away, they'd <laughs> taken the speaker out, they'd driven away, but that didn't, I didn't have any idea. I was gone. I was <laughs> totally gone. The movie's still playing. Yeah. And, and that was, I, whatever it is, and when I teach, I have this class, Visceral Playwriting, mm -hmm. which I've got to get going again. And it's like, you know, it's a, it's an aha moment. It's an it moment. It was like all of a sudden I was freed of being this, dreamy kind of floaty girl and some other power was coming through me it was really like that and I was inventing and I was funny and I was and although that didn't continue it was a crystal moment of me finding this other thing inside me that I don't know if ever would have come out if not for being in these circumstances because I couldn't consciously have said I am a writer mm -hmm. but when you improvise material that's what it is but to actually write it down, I mean, it, it went through my actor self. So the beginnings of writing was all was through the perspective, the visceral perspective of myself as an actor in character. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it was an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did an okay character, and so, but I was also good at material and suggesting material and giving ideas, which I didn't know that I was. Mm -hmm. So it was a huge opening for all of us, for, a, a, you know, a, a seminal moment. And after that, we had learned, basically, to create material, mm -hmm. and to create shows. But we had such a hit. Mm -hmm. We were just... It was, and, and it was, you know, either... It was either... <laughs> uh, in terms of career, if mm -hmm. you think in careerist, it was sort of career killing and career making. Right. You know? Why do you say career killing? Why do you say that? Well, because it's an idealistic stance. It was a stance that took me into a, a certain world that eventually conflicted when I became a film and television actor. Mm. They were, because it wasn't just, you weren't just in a vacuum inventing this stuff. There was a sense of purpose and meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. There was a mission, if you were. And that mission was to create challenging theater, not just theater that sucks up to people, because you can do a collective that just sucks up to the audience. And, yeah but challenging theater that is of the people. And your, your goal is to help to create a culture. And your loyalty is to that culture that you're helping to create. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that is lost now um, is, the, is the important element that theater had to do with, to use the cliche, <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. telling our own stories yeah. you know it's just you know these things became cliches and the wrong people always say them mm -hmm. this is just an offshoot I'm just gonna say that. No, I remember sorry. Sheila Copps who I always liked it was a liberal MP mm -hmm. and she became the MP for culture I don't know or the minister for culture I don't know I think they were trying to get rid of her and I remember 
her um, in front of the what became Canadian, Canadian stage, and she was doing an, an, an interview. And the play that was on was Stephen, Steve, Steve, what's his name? Mm. Martin. Steve Martin's play. Oh, that's the right. The one about the rabbit. Yes, yes, that's right. Which one, is yeah. fine. It yeah. was fine to do. But she gave her her thing and she learned the phrases, tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, oh, yes, it's so important for us to tell our own stories. And I thought, well, we're not telling our stories then. Mm -hmm. I've got nothing against Steve Martin, but mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you're just trotting that stuff out mm -hmm. because it's now done. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's sort of like once it's already happened, it's almost like being a young person and once you know the young person's language, they've changed it because mm -hmm. if you know it, then you're, it's not hip. Yeah. But anyway, it was not just about hipdom, it was about understanding what that struggle was and understanding how polarized. I mean, there were conversations that went down about how there shouldn't be Canadian theater yet. We shouldn't be creating Canadian theater. We had to learn more. Well, we had I, to learn more and study the classics before we would be ready to take on the enormous element of creating our own theatre. I had this conversation. This was fought out in the bars around. And who, people who, forget that. Who? Many people, often people who worked with the classics, right. often people, but not just people who weren't from here. Mm -hmm. There was that colonial thing, but also it was people, often people who were academics or whatever, mm -hmm. who just and they saw the plays that were very different in form from what they were used to and thought they were naive. Mm -hmm. Well, naive art is, you know, what Picasso was trying to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> to capture. Was a part of the problem with the National Theatre School was that they were trying to plug you into a square peg of traditional British, you know, European yeah. Yeah. classic theatre, yeah. and you were the round hole of Canadian yes. theatre. But I also, I mean, that yeah, those cool. politics came later. Mm -hmm. At the time, it didn't speak to me what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It was per other people come out of there and they're great. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, um, I don't uh, mean to be dismissive of Mary Haney, but y yeah, absolutely, that was where where they were. And now they're teaching things that we helped, techniques that we helped to create. Except mm -hmm. now they're techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? You know, and sometimes you see, oh, they're doing the one-person show technique, but it's sort of <laughs> odd. It's odd because you, you, you know it happened in some dirty basement somewhere, uh, because and you now wanted it's to act. You because I just <laughs> wanted a, a job. You know, exactly. I just wanted to. <laughs> but it's so I think in National Theatre School there was no part of me. Mm -hmm. I wanted purpose. Mm -hmm. I wanted meaning beyond, I guess, the art itself. I wanted it to exist in some place, but I didn't know I wanted. I mm -hmm. thought I just wanted to play Ophelia. I just right. wanted to play mm -hmm. the girl, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've never been that good, actually, at playing the girl, mm -hmm. unless I invent the girl. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And that's particular to me. So what I found by going out west and working with 25th Street Theatre, but also by, it was just a time of, you know, okay, there aren't any plays to act in, you make up your own. Mm -hmm. And now that's that standard. But also, were very few of us doing it compared to now. And also, too, a lot of the girls that were created were created by men, too. A lot yes. of the, these roles, and there weren't, at the time, uh, that many women no. creating. But what's weird is, at this time, um, uh, Joy Coghill at the... Um, Oh, what's the name of the um, theater in Vancouver that just uh, had to close? Vancouver Playhouse. She did an all-Canadian season at the Vancouver Playhouse in wow. something like 1972. Really? One, wow. of wh one of the plays was Rita Joe. Really? And hmm. so it's also a time when people were taking more risks than they are now, hmm. you know? And it was also a time where there was some money around, you know? Right. There were grants. I mean, I yeah. tell people, I'm not someone, when I'm talking to my young friends who say, you know, ah, we had to walk two miles or whatever to get. It was actually, no, we had it good. Mm -hmm. There was money around and there was support from the government. Mm -hmm. You know, Trudeau met with whoever was the head of the Canada Council and mm -hmm. said, how can I help? Wow. Right. Can you imagine Harper saying, how can I help? <laughs> no. You know, how can I help? Mm -hmm. You know, and so you got that sense of support mm -hmm. from your 
from your place, that, mm -hmm. that, that there was something important about what you were doing. Right. And that connected with the liberalism of the times, connected with, you know, corporations weren't the only people that had money then. Right. Now corporations are the only people with money. Mm -hmm. So you could sort of live, right. you know? And now, I don't know, I mean, only very luckiest can do that. And even then, you know, mm. I mean, we were poor, but we were able to work and make it something we did. We could do three to four shows a, a, a year, wow. you know?